Hi, Richie here and welcome to my room. iPads and iPhones are considered to be pretty closed and controlled environments. But what if you could customize your iOS device? For example, one touch access to commonly used toggles, being able to close apps with a single swipe, even download anything from the internet and access it through a file system. Well, I'm gonna take you over to my workbench now and I'm gonna show you how. These days, jailbreaking as it's known is more about tweaking your iOS device to make it more functional than it is about downloading free apps. Now, I've actually purchased a few apps from the City App Store, which is the jailbreak alternative to Apple's App Store. I'm gonna show you how those apps can actually impact the use of the iPad. Okay, so here's our iPad mini. The first app I'm gonna show you is called SB Settings. With one swipe, we get access to all those toggles we spoke about. For example, uh, Bluetooth, we can turn it on from here. It'll activate and we can turn it back off. Uh, we can adjust brightness settings straight from here without having to go to the settings panel. We can even look at what processes are currently running and choose to close those down as well. So um, a lot of control over your iPad uh, within this dialog box right here. The next app is called Zephyr and it pretty much takes the place of your home button. Uh, as you can see, just a single swipe up brings up all your current apps. So let's swipe that up again and we'll open SMH. And also with Zephyr, you have one touch or single finger control to switch between your apps. Uh, you can go left and right. We'll go back to uh, SMH there. Now to come back to the home uh, screen, very easy just to swipe up. And there you go. There's our home screen. Extremely easy and intuitive to, to use. Uh, you can also multitask. So you go from eBay, for example. We bring it up slightly. Up comes the open apps and we switch across to QuickFlix. How easy was that? So that's another great program, Zephyr. Now, the next program I'm going to show you is uh, within Safari. It's called the Safari Download Manager. So if we choose to download, for example, a PDF, it will come up with a dialog box. We can choose to put it in pretty much any directory in the iPad. It could be dangerous, but I'll choose just to leave it in the downloads. So we'll download it now. Up the top, there's a dialog to show you uh, the status of any downloading uh, files. That was pretty quick. Uh, we then go to another app. Uh, which we got, which is called iFile. And that gives us pretty much access to the entire directory. As you can see here, we can see all the different file structures of the iPad. We'll go back to, to the downloads area and there's the PDF that we downloaded. Uh, then we can edit that and we can actually compress it into a uh, zip file. So we'll do that first so that we can uh, perhaps email it to somebody. It's pretty quick compression as well. Once it's compressed, we then have the option uh, to mail uh, that new zip file. So it opens up a dialog box using uh, whatever mail you've got as your default. This is where you'd get all of those apps that we just showed you. This is the uh, Cydia app, which is a repository uh, for all the jailbreaking apps. And this is where you go to find out more about jailbreaking. It provides the tools themselves um, through the different mirrors across uh, the world. Uh, it shows you what requirements you need to actually jailbreak, some important information about backing up and the like. And also there's a really good frequently asked questions repository as well. So there you have it. Now that you've seen a little of what a jailbroken iPad can do, would you consider giving jailbreaking a go yourself? Keeping in mind the stability, updating and warranty issues. But do the benefits outweigh the risks? Let us know in the comments below and please like the video if you thought it was interesting and also subscribe to see our weekly uploads. Until next time.